Hi, I'm Ken Coleman, and this is Excuse Me While I Gush, and this is not a sponsored video. Now, it has been a while since I did in my previous Excuse Me While I Gush unboxing, and part of it is that one of my new 47 shirts reveals a new side of me that I'm beginning to become more and more out about. About five and a half years ago, just after the Pulse Club uh, shooting, I came out with not being sure which gender identity I was, but that I was going to stop just trying to very self-consciously fit into a very masculine mold. And since then, as I've experimented and experimented and further developed my sense of self and how I recognize myself, I've, I'm comfortable enough to tell you that I'm a trans female, a trans woman, and I'm continuing to become more out I'm not that out in public yet, and much less on paper, but in time. And part of in my experimentation, part of in my exploration, I I put my finger on the lens, I've been noticing that some of the clothes that I've always loved the design for they turn out to be uh, women's clothes. And something about the texture, something about the cut, something about the framing of the graphics. And even with flannel shirts, I get a little bit of tartan envy. When I saw Wailing Jennies, I was like, oh, I love that tee. And it's like, why is the collar so big? And the saleswoman would be like, well, that's a women's t-shirt. And so there was something intuitive at least there. And my cat is leaving. Let me see, you got that? He's got the door open. So one of the teas that I got from 47. I'm just going to shut the door. There's a clothing brand that a clothing brand that I really like, and it's called Forty Seven, and it's a local company, but they're a pretty popular world over, or across the country. And so, one of the teas is Field House. That's a Field House line from Forty Seven where all of the different layers of the fabric are all stitched on. And I was originally going to show this during the, um, while Tampa Bay Buccaneers were still in the running for the Super Bowl 22, Super Bowl 20, 22. But I just couldn't find an opportunity. So this is the first shirt from 47 that had been waiting in the wings for a reveal. And the other is from their Danny line, D-A-N-I. And I love these old school stripes on the sleeves. It's real little 47 that they're stitched on and not printed and... They feel very old school. It's a Seattle Seahawks. So these are my big two acquisitions that I'm showing off right now from the 47 brand. You know that I like my old um, 60s, 70s, 80s sports iconography and logos and a lot of logos of that era and many different industries. And the next things that I'm showing off are 
They just got released March 1st, four days ago on Lego, from Lego. And when I tried getting this uh, Lamborghini Contouche of their fast of their Speed Champions line, it was already sold out from Lego. So fortunately, I was able to get it on Amazon. And that's where I also got this uh, Ferrari 1970 512M. And I recognize it, and many others probably recognize it from the um, Ford versus Ferrari where it faces off against the Shelby Cobra, the Ford Shelby Cobra. And was it the Ford Shelby Cobra? It's... At some point, this Ferrari faces off against a combination hybrid of um, Shelby's work and Ford's work together. And I can't wait to put these together. These are wider than the older Speed Champions. About a year or two ago, they started switching to a wider format, which can seat to, which helps with my friend's fanfic when I look at the uh, Corvette that came out last year. So next are from Hasbro Pulse. And with Hasbro, I've for a long time been a fan of the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers franchise of the Power Rangers franchise in general G.I. Joe and uh, sometimes Marvel so I've opened up these all tonight first one Dino Megazord and this is not the 1 1 44th scale one. It's less detailed and I like this mainly as one of the first Dino Megazords from the Hasbro deal. From after the De Hasbro and deal with Mighty Morphin Power Rangers has been struck. It isn't that articulated, but it's a Dino Megazord, and roughly about the size of the monsters. Now from Power Rangers in Space. This is my second Astronema. She's got a different design than the previous Astronema, and a different hair color, different hair style. And... Not that articulated, but a nice uh, addition, helping to complete the uh, Power Rangers in Space line. Power, in Power Rangers in Space series for Lightning. And this was Ecliptor, who had kidnapped Astronema when she was Andross's back. Back when she was younger, she's always been Andros's sister. They didn't realize it until later in the sh later in the season. But this is uh, Ecliptor, and he goes from being her captor to sort of being her sidekick slash partner, in almost a Stockholm syndrome type of uh, Power Rangers canon. A great build on that, and I find it interesting just how the Hasbro team gets around building what is generally a monster suit from the Japanese series. Also from space, Power Rangers in space, is Cassie the Pink Ranger. My only hang-up right here and the color matching is a little bit more maroon in real life than it is appearing on screen. Is that the torso is a darker, almost magenta compared to the um, almost purple compared to the rest of the pink. Seeing this on screen, I wish it was that shade of pink. Because I think that pops even more with the black. 
So this is Cassie. And I love her head scope for when there's no helmet. Like astronomer, she's got that braid in the back and there's so much detail in the hairstyle. She's one of my favorite pink rangers. This is her love interest from um, Power Rangers Turbo, the Phantom Ranger. He got a lot more um, backstory and a lot more character development than the IDW comics. And I'm closing up with some of my favorite figures from this video. The G.I. Joe B.A.T.s. These are Cobra Cyborgs. And when I first started reading the G.I. Joe comics, I was reading the Josh Blaylock era. Back when he was printing through Image and then his own Devil's Do label. And his comics were much more grounded in reality and even less about marketing than the Hama era. And I really got into that. I found this, especially coming off of memories of the Sunbow cartoon, I found these stories much more riveting. And the first story that I read had one of these BATs running rampant, malfunctioning, and going through a city while G.I. Joe and Cobra agents were trying to track it down. So they come with interchangeable arm, forearm pieces that can come in their backpacks because BATs come prepared. And they have interchangeable heads and chest plates showing their damage. And you can then so show the inside of the torso. So to close, probably my favorite piece from this video, my favorite action figure from this unboxing, it's Hasbro Lightning Series, well, my favorite Hasbro piece from this unboxing. Gonna build the Legos later. It is the uh, Lightning Series I Guy? Yes, the name for the monsters, especially early in the Mighty Morphing Power Rangers, they weren't always that creative. But this design, it's just so oh my goodness. Character made of eyes, teeth, and. A humanoid anatomy. And sort of like Pudgy Pig. The articulation is just astounding. And the eye can blink. They can move the eyeball around so that eye guy can look in different directions. It's got interchangeable hands and this eye scepter from the show. My favorite feature of this figure is that the lens of these eyes, and the eyes are both of the same shape, the lenses are detachable. So if I was to take this for example, And remove this lens. Then I can take this beam. And there's the eye just blasting and Blast, blast, blast. I can also affix it to Eye Guy's head feature so that I 
the eyeball is able to move and blast at targets. So that I just found so cool. The design of the uh, villains, especially in those early seasons, it was, I'd say about 50% of what enticed me so much about Power Rangers. All right, so if you like this video, if you like this Power Rangers, G.I. Joe 47 with the sports gear, Lego, the SB Champions, please leave a comment below, like, give it a thumbs up, subscribe for more of the such content, and for more uh, queer content. I think that I can, um, I think that I can call myself a queer content creator now. Proudly, you'll be learning more about my uh, trans journey in the coming months, coming years, and as I continue to learn more about myself. Thank you, and have a good night.